The point spread function describes the response of an imaging system to a point source or point object. A more general term for the PSF is a system's impulse response, the PSF being the impulse response of a focused optical system. The PSF in many contexts can be thought of as the extended blob in an image that represents an unresolved object. In functional terms it is the spatial domain version of the transferred function of the imaging system. It is a useful concept in Fourier optics, astronomical imaging, electron microscopy and other imaging techniques such as 3D microscopy and fluorescence microscopy. The degree of spreading of the point object is a measure for the quality of an imaging system. In non-coherent imaging systems such as fluorescent microscopes, telescopes or optical microscopes, the image formation process is linear in power and described by linear system theory. This means that when two objects A and B are imaged simultaneously, the result is equal to the sum of the independently imaged objects. In other words, the imaging of A is unaffected by the imaging of B and vice versa, owing to the non-interacting property of photons. The image of a complex object can then be seen as a convolution of the true object and the PSF. However, when the detected light is coherent, image formation is linear in the complex field. Recording the intensity image then can lead to cancellations or other non-linear effects. Introduction By virtue of the linearity property of optical imaging systems, that is, image, object 1 plus object 2, equals image, object 1, plus image, object 2, the image of an object in a microscope or telescope can be computed by expressing the object plane field as a weighted sum over 2D impulse functions and then expressing the image plane field as the weighted sum over the images of these impulse functions. This is known as the superposition principle, valid for linear systems. The images of the individual object plane impulse functions are called point spread functions, reflecting the fact that a mathematical point of light in the object plane is spread out to form a finite area in the image plane. When the object is divided into discrete point objects of varying intensity, the image is computed as a sum of the PSF of each point. As the PSF is typically determined entirely by the imaging system, the entire image can be described by knowing the optical properties of the system. This process is usually formulated by a convolution equation. In microscope image processing and astronomy, knowing the PSF of the measuring device is very important for restoring the image with deconvolution. Theory the point spread function may be independent of position in the object plane, in which case it is called shift invariant. In addition, if there is no distortion in the system, the image plane coordinates are linearly related to the object plane coordinates via the magnification m as. If the imaging system produces an inverted image, we may simply regard the image plane coordinate axis as being reversed from the object plane axis. With these two assumptions, that is, that the PSF is shift invariant and that there is no distortion, calculating the image plane convolution integral is a straightforward process. Mathematically, we may represent the object plane field as that is, as a sum over weighted impulse functions, although this is also really just stating the sifting property of 2D delta functions. Rewriting the object transmittance function in the form above allows us to calculate the image plane field as the superposition of the images of each of the individual impulse functions, that is, as a superposition over weighted point spread functions in the image plane using the same weighting function as in the object plane, that is. Mathematically, the image is expressed as in which PSF, UAZIM, VAM, is the image of the impulse function I, UAXO. VAO. The 2D impulse function may be regarded as the limit of the square post function, shown in the figure below. We imagine the object plane as being decomposed into square areas such as this, with each having its own associated square post function. If the height, h, of the post is maintained at 1 per watt 2, then as the side dimension w tends to 0, the height, h, tends to infinity in such a way that the volume remains constant at 1. This gives the 2D impulse the sifting property, which says that when the 2D impulse function, I, XAU, YAV, is integrated against any other continuous function, F, U, V, it sifts out the value of F at the location of the impulse, 
that is, at the point. Since the concept of a perfect point source object is so central to the idea of PSF, it's worth spending some time on that before proceeding further. First of all, there is no such thing in nature as a perfect mathematical point source radiator. The concept is completely non-physical and is nothing more than a mathematical construct used to model and understand optical imaging systems. The utility of the point source concept comes from the fact that a point source in the 2D object plane can only radiate a perfect uniform amplitude, spherical wave a euro a wave having perfectly spherical, outward traveling phase fronts with uniform intensity everywhere on the spheres. Such a source of uniform spherical waves is shown in the figure below. We also note that a perfect point source radiator will not only radiate a uniform spectrum of propagating plane waves, but a uniform spectrum of exponentially decaying waves as well, and it is these which are responsible for resolution finer than one wavelength. This follows from the following Fourier transform expression for a 2D impulse function. The quadratic lens intercepts a portion of this spherical wave, and refocuses it onto a blurred point in the image plane. For a single lens, an on-axis point source in the object plane produces an airy disk PSF in the image plane. This comes about in the following way. It can be shown that the field radiated by a planar object is related to its corresponding source plane distribution via a Fourier transform relation. In addition, a uniform function over a circular area corresponds to the airy function, j1, x, slash x in the other ft domain where J1, X, is the first order Bessel function of the first kind. That is, a uniformly illuminated circular aperture that passes a converging uniform spherical wave yields an airy function image at the focal plane. A graph of a sample 2D airy function is shown in the adjoining figure. Therefore, the converging spherical wave shown in the figure above produces an airy disk in the image plane. The argument of the airy function is important because this determines the scaling of the airy disk. If I max is the maximum angle that the converging waves make with the lens axis, r is radial distance in the image plane, and wave number k equals 2 i euro per i, where i equals wavelength, then the argument of the airy function is, k r tan, i max. If i max is small, then radial distance, r, has to be very large before the total argument of the airy function moves away from the central spot. In other words, if I max is small, the airy disk is large. By virtue of this, high magnification systems, which typically have small values of I max, can have more blur in the image, owing to the broader PSF. The size of the PSF is proportional to the magnification, so that the blur is no worse in a relative sense, but it is definitely worse in an absolute sense. In the figure above, Illustrating the truncation of the incident spherical wave by the lens, we may note one very significant fact. In order to measure the point spread function a euro, or impulse response function a euro of the lens, we do not need a perfect point source that radiates a perfect spherical wave in all directions of space. This is because our lens has only a finite bandwidth, or finite intercept angle. Therefore any angular bandwidth contained in the source, which extends past the edge angle of the lens, is essentially wasted source bandwidth because the lens can't intercept it in order to process it. As a result, a perfect point source is not required in order to measure a perfect point spread function. All we need is a light source which is at least as much angular bandwidth as the lens being tested. In other words, we only require a point source which is produced by a convergent spherical wave whose half angle is greater than the edge angle of the lens. History and methods. The diffraction theory of point spread functions was first studied by Airy in the 19th century. He developed an expression for the point spread function amplitude and intensity of a perfect instrument, free of aberrations. The theory of aberrated point spread functions close to the optimum focal plane was studied by the Dutch physicists Fritz Zernike and Niebuhr in the 1930s Euro 40s. A central role in their analysis is played by Zernike circle polynomials that allow an efficient representation of the aberrations of any optical system with rotational symmetry. Recent analytic results have made it possible to extend Niebuhr and Zernike's approach for point spread function evaluation to a large volume around the optimum focal point. 
This extended Niebuhr Zernai theory is instrumental in studying the imperfect imaging of three dimensional objects in confocal microscopy or astronomy under non ideal imaging conditions. The ENZ theory has also been applied to the characterization of optical instruments with respect to their aberration by measuring the through focus intensity distribution and solving an appropriate inverse problem. PSF in microscopy In microscopy, experimental determination of PSF requires sub-resolution radiating sources. Quantum dots and fluorescent beads are usually considered for this purpose. Theoretical models as described above. On the other hand, allow the detailed calculation of the PSF for various imaging conditions. The most compact to fraction limited shape of the PSF is usually preferred. However by using appropriate optical elements the shape of the PSF can be engineered towards different applications. The PSF in astronomy In observational astronomy the experimental determination of a PSF is often very straightforward due to the ample supply of point sources. The form and source of the PSF may vary widely depending on the instrument and the context in which it is used. For radio telescopes and diffraction-limited space telescopes the dominant terms in the PSF may be inferred from the configuration of the aperture in the Fourier domain. In practice there may be multiple terms contributed by the various components in a complex optical system. A complete description of the PSF will also include diffusion of light in the detector, as well as tracking errors in the spacecraft or telescope. For ground-based optical telescopes, atmospheric turbulence dominates the contribution to the PSF. In high-resolution ground-based imaging, the PSF is often found to vary with position in the image. In ground-based adaptive optic systems the PSF is a combination of the aperture of the system with residual uncorrected atmospheric terms. Point spread functions in ophthalmology, PSFs have recently become a useful diagnostic tool in clinical ophthalmology. Patients are measured with a wavefront sensor, and special software calculates the PSF for that patient's eye. In this manner a physician can see what the patient sees. This method also allows a physician to simulate potential treatments on a patient, and see how those treatments would alter the patient's PSF. Additionally, once measured the PSF can be minimized using an adaptive optic system. This, in conjunction with a CCD, can be used to visualize anatomical structures not otherwise visible in vivo, such as cone photoreceptors. See also, Circle of Confusion for the closely related topic in general photography. Airy disk, encircled energy, PSF lab, deconvolution, microscope, microsphere. References. Rachel Noak, Caleb Gnonschild, Justin Mygich, Taeyeon Kim, Peter Morns, True Merrill, Harley Hayden, C.S. Pai, and Jung Sang Kim. Multi-scale optics for enhanced light collection from a point source. Optics Letters. AR ZIV, 1006.2188. Bibcode, 2010OPTEL. 35.2460 NDOI, 10.1364 OL. 35.002460.